so for the purpose of the video, we're gonna go over how you sync your um, GitHub repository for a bioconductor package. Um, and this is something you actually need to do every six months whenever there's a new um, bioconductor release. And so there's this website that explains a lot of these Git commands. And so in general, um, uh, we need to talk about what a remote is. Um, uh, both of you have already um, um, added um, the bioconductor remote, but just as a summary, the remote is what Git, the version control system, uses to identify external uh, computers that you're connected to. Um, and so your particular Git repository for let's say track in this case um, is linked to a computer in, on github.com, but also one on the bioconductor controls, right? And so we have two remotes. Normally, um, the origin remote, which is the default name, uh, that will be GitHub. And then bioconductor recommends here that you call the bioconductor one upstream. Uh, but that is actually, a, you know, you could use any other word, you could use bioconductor there. But we'll keep using upstream, so like, um, all of this will make sense, right? Like all the commands without having to always mm -hmm. modify them. So once you connect your Git repository to both, right? So if you, you could show us track a little bit on the terminal. Um, we don't actually need to see any of the R code. There we go. Yeah. So if you go to the terminal and just type git remote uh, space dash v for uh, verbose, you enter. You, you'll see here we have the two remotes already connected. You have the origin remote and the upstream remote. Right? Um, and actually, there's you see them twice because there's fetch and push, but like we don't really care about that in this scenario, right? Um, and so once you connect to both, you type git space fetch space um, dash dash all uh, enter. So this one will, um, the git fetch command is a command for like downloading things from your remotes that you don't have on your computer but it doesn't actually change the files that you see, right? So it's part of git pull. Git pull will internally fetch, but then it does a next step, which is to update your files to a particular version. So normally you would git pull from, let's say someone made a change on github.com, you would like git pull from origin. Um, typically your default branch is um, master or main. In your case, um, can you type git status, sorry, please? Um, yeah, in your case, your default branch is main, right? Mm -hmm. um, well. So, um, um, so git fetch in this case in particular is downloading things that were present on upstream that you didn't have in your computer. And so this is what happens every six months because Bioconductor will make commits to our, uh, rep our um, um, repositories um, and they'll make actually a new branch. So they'll make commits to your, um, in, the case, in their case, they call their default branch, the master branch. Mm -hmm. So in that, in the master one, that's where they'll get ready for bio CD um, um, And so the commit that they'll do there is that they'll bump the version number so let's say your package was like um, 1.01, um, uh, sorry, yeah, 1.0.1, 1. then it'll become like uh, 1.2.0. Um, so the, there's the X, the Y, the Z. And so the DL version, um, um, I think will be, uh, an even number for devel on Y and an odd for release, I think. Well, I guess uh, maybe it depends on what time of the year it is. Um, and so let's say your current version was like 1.01. .01. They'll make two versions. They'll make 1.1.0 1 .1 and 1.0.1. 1. 
um, 2.0. Um, um, and I realized I misspoke a bit in all of this because of the initial versions of your package were even one. They were like 0 0.99, right? I think. So sorry, like for a brand new package, the, um, the default is 0 0.99.0. And so the release version will become 1.0.0 and the DVL will be 1.1.0. Okay. So because you have all these two new versions, right? Um, this one will be pointed to by a CDVL. The other one will be pointed to a new branch called release underscore um, the major version of Iconductor on the score, the minor version of Iconductor, which in this case is 3.15, right? And so at this point, we've now loaded um, changes that happen on the master branch on the upstream repository, uh, remote, sorry, and a new branch called release, right? But those changes are not reflected on your own computer yet, nor github.com. So the next commits, the next messages, sorry, or git commands will be about how do you do that. So we need to first check out your like um, um, your um, like git checkout is like what are the files that you want to be seeing right now, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the second part of git pull, right? It's git fetch plus git checkout. So let's check out in your case in your case main which you already did right because you're on the master on the brain on the main branch already um so yeah if you get space check out space main nothing will change for your in your case because you're already there so okay. you press yeah press in there um so you're already on main it says right mm -hmm. but you might have been on a different like um side branch that you're playing around with something right so at this point let's get merge um in our case here like you could do um i mean the guideline here says uh first do git merge origin um for slash master in your case it would be main um main so that will like merge any changes from github.com right because origin okay. represent github.com which in this case you don't have anything. Right. So if you press, it won't do anything. For an update, yeah. Right. Now let's do the one where we get merge from upstream forward slash master. So master here is uh, upstream is by conductor, the master is the default branch that you have there. So this will actually make changes. So if you notice, um, uh, it changed the description file. So you type like git log, for example. Um, or actually, because we're in back on um, our studio, if you go to the Git panel, then go to commit or any of those, then go to history. Um, we can see now that that was a change they made, right? They, they bumped it to 1.1.0. Mm -hmm. right? um, so now that change exists on your computer, but doesn't exist on GitHub.com, on GitHub yeah. right? So at this point, yeah, you can close that. So let's push the github.com. So that would be git push origin um, space uh, main in your case, right? Cool. So now that will update on github.com. Right? That could have also just been regular git push, right? In your case, yes, okay. right? Uh, because it's your default branch and stuff. Um, so normally, when I'm trying to sync things, I actually do both git push origin main and then git push upstream master. Like in this case, it won't do anything because. Um, Does this also do the main? Uh, yeah, master sorry, that, that syntax, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So it really is up to date in that case, right? Okay. Um, um, and so that. We've, we've dealt with like the bio CD well branch, right? Now we need to, um, if you want to be able to edit things on um, uh, on the release branch of my conductor, we now don't need to make, create that branch locally. So let's type git checkout space and then capital letters 
uh, release underscore three underscore 15. Right. So we like from the steps from the website, that's like um, step 10 and below. Um, right. So, um, cool. So let's, let's do that. So that will create it locally. Um, but now we need to merge the remotes, right? So we'll get merge upstream uh, forward slash release underscore 315. Um, uh, and uh, you have a type on merge. Yeah. And we'll do the same thing with, um, so in this case, nothing updated because we already had Oh that one from uh, by conductor, but this let's do the same from GitHub. So git merge origin for slash release 315. Cool. Um, um, right. So it says like nothing can be done there because it actually doesn't exist on github.com yet. Oh, okay. So now you can uh, git push, um, uh, maybe that git push space upstream space release on the score 315, nothing will change because it's currently updated, right? Uh, but I still like always uh, run the two commands. So actually run, whenever I git push, I like do like git push origin, let's say um, origin main in your case. Then I do the semicolon syntax which is like when you can specify more than one command in one line, mm -hmm. and then I do like git push the other one. And so that way, like, cause I have on my terminal window configured such that I can search my uh, previous git commands. I just find the one that is like, the one that pushes to the develop branches and then the one that pushes to the release branches. Okay. Right? So it makes it easier in the future instead of having to always type all of this. So if you do this like semicolon uh, space, git push, um, space origin space release on the score 315. Um, you have a type on origin. Mm -hmm. Like this is helpful so that you don't like sometimes forget to push to uh, one remote, right? Uh -huh. So if you do that, the first presenter, the first one will say everything up to date because it was right from my conductor. Uh, the back of the machines. But when you uh, did the origin one, release underscore 315 didn't exist on github.com. Now right. it does. And now like github.com will reflect those changes. So at this point, we've like covered the material from this link that I sent, which is how do you um, sync to your computer and then to GitHub, like the changes that my conductor made, right? Mm -hmm. But now let's do another thing, which is, how do you actually um, make a change in your package? And so um, the, in theory, you're supposed to only make um, changes to the release branch. If there are uh, changes that are, are bug, right? You're trying to fix. Uh, but if you're adding new features, you should only do them in theory on the develop branch. I sometimes add new features to both branches immediately when I'm like, oh, this is something people will really want. And so um, this is not a bug, but it is something we want to do. So let's go to your citation file. So you have it on um, uh, inst citation. So this citation file, right? We um, have the citation about package, which I guess if the title, I don't know, if the, did the title of the package change? No. Right. It's still track about conductor package plasma. Yeah, I believe so. All right, cool. And so then we want to update the citation. Um, so I think the title is good there, right? Authors are good, but now we actually have a DOI. So maybe you could replace that with the, with the, um, with the actual one. Yeah. Um, you can delete the, the first 10, yeah. And then do it also in line 33. Cool. 
All right, so now you can make a commit about it. And um, uh, I just say like, So we're going to do the style that like Mar Marcel Ramos from Bioconductor Core prefers, which is to have separate commits for things that you change versus commits that bump version numbers. Okay. So we'll make one commit for that. Then go to the description file. And um, bump the version number. Yeah. You can also date the date if you want, line five. Mm -hmm. Cool. So make a comment about that. Just bumpy numbers. Bumpy version numbers helps like users see that mm -hmm. something has changed, right? So I like to make here comments where I'm like, hey, like this is something. Like I, I mentioned the, the exact version number. The exact message you wrote is exactly what Marcel Ramos does. Okay. It'll just commit bump version. <laughs> so I could say bump version 101. Yeah, you uh, yeah you want. Um, so I like I like mentioning the exact version because it's um, um, that way I don't actually need to like go to the git dev to see what actually changed. Okay. I can just from the message understand what happened. So commit that, and so let's go back to your terminal. Um, and if you type git status, we'll see that we are on the release underscore three fifteen branch. Mm -hmm. So now um, let's push the changes. To up to the release branch. So you use the up arrow, I think, at this point. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so, so I want the, the semicolon command here. To yeah, because we want to push up sync the changes to, to both uh, bi the bioconductor machines and GitHub. Okay. Cool. So um, at this point, you made the changes directly on the release branch. And so now I'm going to teach you how do you actually incorporate changes from one branch into another branch. So if you type git log, um, um, so we only need, um, this is a nice thing about, um, well, it kind of broke because you resized the window. Oh, well. you, you press Q yeah. um, and then do it again. Well, that's all we need. You can press Q now. Um, we only really need to see, to get the ID for the commit that you made that you actually want to make on both versions. And so in that case, it's this one over here, because that's a commit where we change the, uh, uh, the citation file, right? So um, in, for the next thing to work, we only need to copy like the first, I think six or seven characters. You could copy the full ID, but like, um, just copy a portion of the ID that is at least six or seven characters. Um, and so now let's go back to our um, branch um, that we want to sync with these changes. And in our case, let's check out the main branch, okay. which is the, because you made the changes directly on the release version first, yeah. right? So yeah, git check out main. Now let's use a command that is called git space cherry dash pick and then paste the ID. Cool. So this will like say like, hey, I want this commit that I made on my other branch. In this case, it was a release underscore three hundred four fifteen branch. I want that change and I want to have that same change on, on this version, right? Mm -hmm. So if you go to like um, the incitation file, you have it open over here on the top. Um, We'll, if you scroll down to where the, you know, you can see that those changes were made there, but in, now you go to description, um, you'll see that the date hasn't changed. And the, I mean, in this case, the version number is a different one. Yeah. So here I would make again, the changes to the date and bump the version number and make a second commit. I mean, the third commit in this case, actually, um, uh, but a second in terms of like bumping version number thing. You haven't saved the file, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool.
Mm-hmm. Awesome. Um, oh, so now on your terminal, if you type git space push, then up arrow. Um, now replace um, the release 315 by like, uh, what was it? Main mm -hmm. colon master or master colon main, I forget. Which one is it? I think it's main column master. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, uh, like uh, main. Cool. You don't you don't need that because oh, uh, GitHub.com and your computer the okay. default branches is main. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So this is first pushing to the back doctor machines, then it's pushing to GitHub.com. So this is what you'll need to do if you're. Um, if someone identifies a bug um, and you need to fix both versions, um, but uh, um, um, you might, I mean, normally you're mostly gonna be working on the main branch in your case, because it's a def the development branch and making changes that are like adding new features that um, the idea of doing so is like you then, um, are basically the development branch back in Doctor is like a playground for developers where you can try things, but you're not promising them to users, right? You can try to add a feature, maybe it doesn't work, then later on you delete it, right? Um, or make some other changes. Uh, uh, and normally, uh, I mean, in the past we didn't have GitHub Actions, right? So um, uh, Bioconductor would be the, the one that would test your software, see that it doesn't break anything, right? Uh, so they will run um, tests on Linux, Mac, and Windows, both on the release branch and on the development branch, right? So the development branch uses all of the development versions of packages. Mm -hmm. And so that it will be useful. And you'll you'll definitely need to use it if a, another bioconductor package that you're using uh, changes in the development version in a way that you have to make changes in your package to reflect to those changes, right? Uh -huh. um, so I've had to do that, for example, recently with Spatial WD, where like the development branch of Spatial Experiment had changed in, in ways that it wasn't compatible with the release branch. And so I had to like um, update the, the development branch of, of uh, Spatial WD, right? Uh -huh. um, and so, uh, as time goes on, you'll have a bunch more of release underscore something branches. Uh, but um, Bioconductor has limits on when those branches can be updated. Um, so at some point the, um, around October, they'll be like, okay, that's the last day you can make changes to the release underscore 315 branch. And after that, we won't take any more changes. So after that, you in theory could have new changes on GitHub.com for that branch that are not present on the back of the machines. Uh, I've never done that. But, but don't do that. Is that the? Yeah, I don't. I've never done that. Okay. Yeah. Um, 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 so, uh, as you can see, there's a lot of GitHub commands, and like the order that you run them is a bit important, um, and so. Bioconductor.org under the developers tab, they have different um, tutorial pages explaining some of these steps, right? Um, and so we went through one of them about how to sync, but we also went through like, how do you make a change on both branches, mm -hmm. right? Which uh, I don't, I mean, I can provide this exact link later. Cool. So how do you tell if that it like worked? Like, I guess like, how do I make sure that that change got all the way to Bioconductor? Like, yeah, so um, go to um, go to your own package on bioconductor.org. So back type bioconductor.org um, forward slash packages forward slash your package name in the same uh, in the same capitalization that you yeah, have. So right now here, this is a website for the release branch. Um, um, so you could copy this URL, paste it in a new tab, and then replace release by devel. Uh, so on both of them, 
they include a link here to this build, okay? So click on that one. Uh, each of them will link to one of them here. This, this is the develop, right? Uh, the URL will be very similar for the release. And so every day for software packages, they run the full set of tests. And you'll see here the ID of the last commit that was made that where they tested things. And you can see the exact time the commit was made and the last time they ran the tests, right? So right now we just made a change that is not gonna be reflected here. Okay. You would have to wait at least, I mean, there's a cutoff on the day where like, if you, if you did it after, after that cutoff, you need to wait until the next day. So you might need to wait between 24 and 48 hours okay. for something, for a change to be reflected here, which is where like the BioCities package and GitHub Actions come into play because you can get like feedback in like 15 minutes to an hour. Gotcha. Right? Um, so and then I've noticed it's like trig 1.01, 1 .01, right? And then if we go to the release version, Mm -hmm. It's going to be 1.0. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then when it does get updated, it'll be 111. Mm -hmm. Okay. Versus, versus 101 dimensions. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only time your package number will be that, right? Cool. So normally you don't change the X number for a package. Okay. I've only had to do that once where like, like the X is supposed to signify a major change in how the package okay. internally works. Um, so normally I've only, yeah, I've only had to do that once and it, it wasn't that situation, it was a different one. And then uh, the middle one is like? The middle one would be like develop versus release. Okay. Um, and they, they keep increasing. So like some of my packages are like 1.25 now, because they've been around for back in the, for like okay. 10 different versions. So of like version. in October, it'll be like 1.2? Uh, um, the develop branch will be 1.3. 1.3, and then the release, release will be, be 1.2. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's like I got them wrong at the beginning. So the, the odds are the develop branches. It plus is one to everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So really, like the release is kind of like mm. skips. Yeah. Like it's like every two. It's yeah. like, okay. And so, I mean, really, the code hasn't really changed for you, but like, um, People that, because you bump the version number, BIOS manager install will recognize that there's a new version and will tell users, hey, your package is out of date, you should install the new mm -hmm. version, right? Um, so if you run BIOS manager, column, column, valid, mm -hmm. you'll see like, hey, I, can, I should update my package, yeah. right? Um, although in this case, we only change the citation, right? Um, now, if you go back to your package, there's one last thing where like, a lot of times, um, if you open the news.md file, um, 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 you could use this news.md file to then say like, hey, version 1.1.3, I fixed a, a bug that was reported by Josh, okay. right? Um, about X or Y thing, right? So that's, you can provide a bit of a summary for users about what's going on. Um, and so sometimes, um, sometimes I'm a bit lazy and I don't make all the tiny commits. So I'll make one commit that changes everything. Um, I'll merge it into the release branch that will create a, a git conflict, which I then need to resolve by, by fixing the date and fixing like, if I have the version number over here, I might need to fix that. So, um, Marcel Ramos and other people, they don't like that because he makes the Git history a bit like messy, um, which, you know, if you want to be really careful, like you can make the changes plus update the news file without updating the version number, without specifying the version number. And then on the commit where you're committing the increase of the description version number oh. and the date, in that one, include the change to the version number for the news. Okay. Um, so that would be like, I think the cleanest uh, way you could do it. Um, and so one more thing that changed now is if you go to uh, your .github directory, um, then go to workflows, then open the check BIOS-C. So this is a, a file that gets created by BIOS-CDs. Um, and so you scroll a bit further down. Um, line 55 here is saying like, hey, I wanna run R develop with BIOS 315 
and the bioconductor defile um, Docker image, which is no longer the case, right? Okay. So right now I'll recommend that you change where it says eval, change it to 4.2. Um, and then where it says um, devel at the end there on bioconductor Docker, um, sorry, uh, you know, I guess, um, change it to capital release underscore three underscore 15. Um, like, I mean, you could definitely test it on bioconductor, on the bioconductor devel setting. However, since the bioconductor devel is brand, brand new, potentially some packages are not working on our mm -hmm. devel because people haven't, like if our devel introduces a change that breaks packages um, on the devel branch, authors haven't had a lot of time yet to fix things. So I, I always switch to like devel, like once we get closer to the release mm -hmm. of, okay. of the next version of Bicon, okay? Initially just to test with the latest version. So this one is, um, if you save this file and commit it, right? Um, it's not showing up, but if you go to commit, yeah. I think it will show up. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's one way we could change things there. Um, and so, um, back of the core members like Marcel or Lori, um, particularly Marcel, like, like actually this file, you don't necessarily need it to have it on the main branch. Um, you could have it on another branch. And so that way you would separate commits related to GitHub actions versus commits related to the package. Um, I don't do that, but I can see why they, they do it. Um, uh, but now, yeah. So at this point I would just commit it and then push to both remotes. Okay. Yeah, so just commit and then it's a it's a bit of a yeah 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 it's a bit of a shame now like the git push button uh, on RCU won't well, be great. <laughs> the, the only does the github.com one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So um as you can see just typing like git push then up arrow and having that ability to search mm -hmm. your old like Terminal commands. It's nice. <laughs> it comes really, um, yeah, powerful here. Cool. So I think that's enough. That was a, um, yeah, lots of things to do. Yeah. All right, we're back because uh, how do you know if back the made a change to your package? So the way I do this is they have this um, RSS feed. Um, so for software packages, um, um, actually, this is new, now that I look at it. It used to be a single RSS feed for all of um, all packages together, but now they have individual RSS feeds for individual packages. So I would just subscribe to the RSS feed for your own package. Okay. Um, so there's different like tools out there for subscribing to RSS feeds. Um, one of them, which um, um, one of them that I use that someone else recommended uh, to me is this one, IFTT, where you can subscribe to our NSS feed and you can have keywords. So I'm actually subscribed to the full Biconductor one. And I have a couple keywords that are like basically just my package names. So I get an email if someone made a change one of my packages okay. or they mentioned actually one of my packages. Um, so actually I, I mean, here, I guess they have examples of how you can set up um, the RSS feed, right? So typically they won't make changes to your packages except when they bump the version number for a release. Um, however, for example, Herve uh, pages, was part of the Bioconductor core team. He's a um, container and author like genomic ranges, um, has four vectors, I ranges, um, and also does a lot of summarized experiment work. If he makes a change in his package that breaks downstream packages, he sometimes goes and fixes them for you. Um, so 
he does nice things. He just cool. <laughs> you need him. <laughs> then uh, you just need to pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oops. Uh, hurry. <laughs> 